that everyone that made it into top eight, besides maybe Isan, I'm not sure, also opted in for Summit during the voting phase. So you know that these two, or the, or everyone here, has a heart in it to try and take that highest placing spot. Yeah, all of them were in the running, and now we're here in top eight, and now it ain't about the votes. It's all about the skill. Let's see who can take it all the way to Grand Finals and win this tournament and get that last chance qualifier spot here for Summit. Yep, and we got ourselves a Pokemon battle here, ironically going to Smashville instead. Yeah, wow. <laughs> what? <laughs> Alrighty, so it looks like the Squirtle not working out, but still he just opts immediately for the Ivysaur. Of course, all of these characters besides Charizard, low profile, the, the hitboxes will work out to trying to hit this small character. Uh, okay. Yep, gonna get a young reset, Isam the homie. Okay, yeah, all right, they're good. So reset back to neutral, I like it. Oh, beautiful up B coming out, but still gonna get caught on the return from that quick attack. And one thing that is really underrated is that quick attack having a hitbox. It is really strong to have that. Yeah, as opposed to Peach's agility, where you go right through them. But I wanna talk about the, uh, those high up Bs from Pandarian's recovery. Oh, the Dare not quite gonna be able to find his mark, but yeah. Woo -hoo -hoo -hoo! And I am going to call you out. You're going to be swinging like Tarzan. Eat this thunder and Esam with the call out. I mean, it was one of those things where, like, if you do that high recovery, sure, you get more movement out of it. It's a lot faster. But Esam knew the position that Pandarian wanted to be in, was already there, one step ahead, just takes that stock. Oh, man. And uh, Electric ain't too good against grass, but Esam is making it work here. Already 68%. And wow, Isam is going in and just really doing work against the strongest Pokemon on the lineup here, Ivysaur. Yeah, and I mean, I think this is Pandarian's strongest Pokemon as well. Pretty much using solely Ivysaur. Woo! Oh, just went all the way out there to be able to get that edge guard. Charizard gonna come out. I'm, I'm gonna expect going back to Squirtle in just a little bit. Let's see how long he tries to go for this. The dare? <laughs> Puts him in a bad position. Let's see how Pandarian tries to roll with it, though. Yeah, it's pretty scary to go Charizard in these earlier percents. Good uh, good switch right there. And it's, it's just really scary because you are combo food. It's, yeah. uh, you don't want to be on that Charizard at that earlier percent. The Water Gun going to force Esam out. But the Skull Bash and the Quick Attack should make it back. Really great angle coming out from Esam. Right, just trying to find a poke. The back air, still not enough to do wow. it. And Squirtle definitely not known for um, his kill power in the air. Definitely has some grounded moves. But we got the Yeet on deck. Yep. Pretty much a Dr. Mario back throw. I guess, yeah. I guess they shared the models or something like that for that one. Alrighty. Oh, man. Really great switch, but the back air is going to catch the switch. He's going to have to switch to Charizard. Gets the Thunder trade, but it's still not enough. Isan still trying to keep this pressure on the Nair out of shield. We'll hit him back out, and right now Pandarian does not have an answer. Yeah, looking a little bit rough. Oh, and there's the Flare Blitz. Two stock for Isan, not even reaching 50% on his second stock there. All right, um, so if you guys were wondering if Isam knows how to edge guard Pokemon Trainer, uh, he does. Yep. <laughs> Every single recovery option, I feel like he just covered insanely well. The only character we didn't really see him edge guarding was uh, Squirtle. But for the most part, the other two Pokemon with better recoveries, he was able to edge guard them. And wow, Isam made that matchup look like hell for Pokemon Trainer. I mean, Isam is one of those players that pushes himself very far, especially when he has the advantage position. And so he'll try to make these guesses on where you're going to be on your position. And in the case, that's a character like Pokemon Trainer, it's not too many options of where you're going to go. You're going to either swing back down below, or you're going to go for like a Flare Blitz or Fly. But you, most of the time, there's not too many high recovery options that you're going to go for as Pokemon Trainer. So Isam just made those calculations and thought, okay, you're probably going to be here. And it worked out for him. Yeah, and Isam, definitely a player that has had that play, play style since Smash 4. It wasn't as strong, but, and that's one of the things, like, coming into this game, a lot of people expected Isam to be very good just because, like you said, he's a player that he gets that advantage state and he pushes it as far as possible, but sometimes it can backfire, and Pandarian was ready with that down air. Yep, that down air so quick, and, of course, a large hitbox that every commentator has to talk about. Going to be able to close out that stock, but the up smash, still not enough to do it. Going to be able to barely survive that. I like the switch into Charizard here. He's already at high percent. Doesn't have to worry about getting comboed. And he has that beefy weight with that recovery. Should be able to get back on the stage here. Oh, just goes right over him. Just, I don't think he was expecting that cross up for sure. Ooh, gonna switch here in the squirter here, but the backer will seal it out. Maybe not the most advised switch there, but um, nonetheless, gonna be on Ivysaur. All okay, right, and now we have seen Isen edge guard all three Pokemon. <laughs> yep, it, it, the Trinity is complete. Yeah. <laughs> Already the up air pressure, but he's gonna be able to get out of it. But one more pivot grab, and of oh, course, man. that up air sends you back downwards, basically an auto cancel to be able to get those up air strings. 
Yeah, and I mean, what an amazing tool, right? You have this redundantly big hitbox, and it pushes you back to the ground, so you get more of those redundantly big hitboxes. Yeah, exactly. Well, let's see how he tries to make it back. Of course, Esam with the pressure, and the Flare Blitz gonna get that forward smash, put him back off stage. The pressure's there, but he air dodges through just to make sure he doesn't get hit by it. Into the Thunder, oh, and he Ooh. follows him all the way off the top. And gets that edge, or excuse me, that kill anyway. And Esam delayed his thunder just a tad bit so he could call the switch out. What an amazing play, and wow, Esam is doing such a great job when he gets the up throw, when he gets him off stage. He is making sure he either gets a lot of damage or he gets these stocks. All right, spacing it out with the back air. How does he get able to get it? But of course, that quick attack, like you said, the hitbox is so good at interrupting people trying to edge guard, but it's going to take him off the top with those up airs. Not going to get a thunder or anything afterwards, though. I really want to point out that I've seen a lot of people play against Pokemon Trainer, and Esam is by far the best player I've ever seen that at punishing switches. He is so good. He knows the time. Yo! All right, all right, Esam. All okay. right. Yeah, he's one of those players when he feels himself. He feels himself. <laughs> yeah, he's like yeah, super definitely. hard. <laughs> yeah. Even when going for taunts and stuff like that, but Seismic Toss will be able to do it. Still 103% onto Pandarian. Might be. Uh, Curtin is very soon on his next game unless he can get something going, but it looks like Esam has a momentum here, putting him off stage one more time. The Thunder barely whips and he can't get the follow up, but he still gets the up tilt. 30%. Oh, wait a minute. Okay, maybe if we get some up air strings, Esam already at 56%, and Ivysaur is very well known for getting these early stocks. Gets the forward air, doesn't connect into the Vine Whip though. Yeah. The dash attack will kill it off the top, and Esam gonna. He's going to take that game, but it was uh, it's looking pretty suspect, man. I, I think uh, a couple more dares or up airs, Ivy would have had that game in the bag. Yeah, but closes it out before it gets a little bit too hairy. Now, we were two for two on game five scenarios, but Esam's up 2-0 right now. Yeah, I mean. We'll, we'll uh, see how this, how this works out. Uh, <laughs> you know, if, uh, if I was a betting man, I don't know if this is going to game five, man. <laughs> this, uh, we even got Esam putting on the, uh, the wrestling uniform. Yeah, I got to get ready for that event from 2GG happening early April. Uh, oh, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Very true. Yeah, yeah, right. All right, let's see how this goes down. All right, so we're going to be on Pokemon Stadium once again here, starting off with the Squirtle. Um, pretty standard opening for the most part. Um, Squirtle just a very strong character at getting these early percents. For the most part, in terms of just like Pokemon Trainer meta, we see Squirtle's land a hit, get 50%, and we're switching right into Ivy. Yeah, it got those early percent combos, but not quite going to work out there. Decides to switch to the Ivy. Oh, the jab reset into Ooh. the up tilt. Continues on the combo with that back air. Gets the position and gets a spike with the thunder, too. Ooh, again with the Nair, and Nair, falling Nair is such a great conversion tool for Pikachu. And the down air, again, will connect, and we saw the match. We saw last game start up the exact same way, but Esam is not going to get phased by that. He knows what he can do. He knows what his character can do in terms of advantage, and the parry, wow! Yeah, of course, withdraw. One of those moves that's kind of hard to punish, but either punishing it on shield, footstooling it, or parrying it is your best bet. Do a lot of people try to respect that move a lot because it's very strong. Wow. Oh, the clips with the Thunder Jolt, though. Let me get this snipe with the T-Jolt. Esam showing us all kinds of different ways you can edge guard with Pikachu. And I think we've seen all the <laughs> so many different displays, displays. We've seen the back air, the forward air. Now, also the down air, and as well as the T-Jolt. Right now, Pandarian trying to get something started, though. All right, the back air. Oh, tries to find the Vine Whip. Trying to catch and go high. It's not going to work out there. Esam still continuing on the damage. Ooh, man, with that reverse up air hitbox as well right now. Trying to catch this landing with the up air. Wow, the back air going right through that T-Draw, and he's catching Esam's landing. Pandarian for the first time in the set with the lead here. Yep, well, let's see how long that lasts. Of course, Esam, any, any time he could get that big edge guard and put himself back in the lead. We'll get Snare, but not all the hits connect. Esam needs to find an opening, but right now, Pandarian connecting all these back airs, all these forward airs. Oh, the forward tilt, not gonna get that second one. Ivy still returns a forward tilt himself and gets that pivot grab. Down throw is gonna take it. Yeah, really strong throw there coming out from Pandarian. And right now, up an entire stock. Can Esam strike back? He delays the thunder once again, but the uh, he's gonna not get caught from that air dodge. Trying to pressure that shield. Jumps right out of it, but Esam is ready with the chase, but just does oh, not find the damage. right height with Ooh. that forward air. Wow, and just like that, 46% off of that one grab conversion. Another up air, and Esam is looking pretty uh, pretty scared here for Esam in terms of just the stock, man. It's uh, it's pretty scary. One down air, one one down throw maybe? Oh, no, going to opt for that fourth throw. All right, still attacking on that damage. Overlapped in the percents here. Esam's got to find something quick. Goes for the charge there just to see maybe, okay, you know what, up smash out of shield, maybe that'll work out. He's definitely looking for it, but he jumps out. Gets that back air anyway. Going to close out the stock. 
putting him in the game four, keeping himself alive here. With the two stock as well, and we don't usually see this, but Charizard on the victory screen, and with that back air, of course, you know, very large move for Charizard. Definitely one of his better moves for sure, and he does have some throw setups as well. It's very specific percents. Um, but yeah, I mean, back air, very solid kill option. Up smash out of shield, another very solid kill option. And probably the most common one we see is that seismic toss, the up throw, very, very solid kill option as well. And yeah, Charizard definitely used for mainly recovering, but also used, like, I, th I feel like his secondary uses is like his weight and his kill options as well. Yeah, and a lot of people I've seen what they do as Pokemon Trainer is that because you sometimes have to stack your options that you have after the switch. So a lot of people will do like IV Star, oh, I'm in a bad position, switch into up smash or something like that. Yeah. So just be able to keep that kill option in the back of the pocket in case the, their opponent's not ready for it. Okay, right now we're going to start off again, once again with the Squirtle, but it looks like this time Pandarian getting a lot more neutral hits, not having to use the switch defensively. And that's another thing that's very important for Pokemon Trainer. Down air. Oh, going to get the tech here. Another downer not going to um, work out here, but so much damage on Isen. I mean, that's why he wanted to stage. I mean, of course, he has that white space for um, quick attack and Thunder Jolt to be able to get that advantage position, but also, Woo! oh my god. And just like that, once again, the Charizard back air. Isen not ready for that option. Yeah, he's going to close out yet another stock. I don't think he has a jump, so, oh wow. Use it to the upbeat just to yes. move past the... The, the, the switch timer, I believe we call that sweet stop swapping because uh, Leffen found that out. So yeah, really, really good option coming out. And right now, Pandarian doing an amazing job pair or um, recovering here against Esam. Definitely not an easy thing to do. Esam very proficient at these edge guards. Yep. And of course, withdraw does slow down if you hit it, but it looked like the thunder jolt was not quite enough. Pandarian, Wait all a of minute. a sudden, getting a lot of momentum, finds the corner di though, gonna survive that sweet spot vine whip. Oh man, oh, gonna catch the back air now. Now in a bad position, gonna have to switch the charge just, just for the recovery, and he's on stage. Wait, the forward tilt will punish that forward smash and able to switch right back into the Squirtle. Oh, Dare out of shield, just puts himself back into a good position. Can he get the punish? No, Ivysaur not gonna have that range or option to punish that far behind shield there. Trying to get that dash attack, you don't see that move too often. Yeah, it's a little bit committal. Thought maybe that the long lasting hitbox at the ledge might work, but Dare what? is up air. He used the platform to reset himself and go right into the upper. That, like, straight up looked true. That's actually crazy. Yeah. All and right now, Pantarian with three stocks. Oh, my Lord. Wow, he's got the moves. He used up air to bring himself down. Then he used up B to bring himself back up. Then now recovering with the Zard. Wow, Pandarian's recovery options have been so much more mix-up heavy. But the back air, not going to take Charizard out. Yeah, 172%. And, of course, finding that corner DI will work Splendidly for you. Up throw still not going to be able to do it. Let's see how he lands back on the ground, though. Uses those multiple jumps to his advantage. Oh, dang. He definitely tried to kill him at 26%. <laughs> would not be surprised if that tipper back air would kill. That move is very, very strong. And right now, Zard is at 204%. He is doing such a great job of surviving. And we're going to switch to the Squirtle here. Going to go for more of that nimble aspect. You know, just very hard to hit. Yeah. And uh, he got a couple of hits off of that, too. I mean... I is Squirtle at that high of a percent, you can just sneeze on him and then he'll be dead. So just being able to take that risk, get that percent, and put him in another kill range percentage, really big for Pandarian here to bring himself to game five. Dude, he uh, he is up two stocks here. Esam on his last stock, 80%. We'll see if Esam can make anything happen. Looks like we got some lightning loops here. The Pikachu version, though. The Nairs and the forward air also, wait a minute, try to call him out with the Thunder, but the withdrawal is going to save him. Yeah, like I said before, try to find the positional advantage and just catch where Pandarian was going to be. But Pandarian doing a good job mixing it up with the high recovery there. Gets that down air. Woo! Oh, he still falls up. Oh, my God. So clean coming out from, from Pandarian. Tries to get the Nair edge guard. He has to be careful. You can't be feeling yourself too much out here. And there it is once again, the down air into the up air off that same platform, but we're doing it on the left side. Oh my goodness. Uh, this is what I'm talking about. Esam was feeling himself a little bit too hard and then thought maybe, okay, I lost that game. I'll bring yeah. it back around. Pandarian all of a sudden has that momentum. He got that game in and he was able to two stock him yeah. a second time around. So. And if you guys are just tuning in, I had faith from the very get-go. Like, right when Esam was up 2-0, I was like, I knew, I know Pandarian's going to bring it back to game five. So if you guys are just tuning in, that was my stance on it. And we're here. <laughs> game number five. Pandarian, honestly, like, that, that game three and four looked so solid. But we're here on Esam's counter pick. Looks like Smashville will be the pick. Let's see how this goes down. We're going back to smash the original stage we started on. I mean, we saw Esam getting those really nice edge guards in the beginning. 
So he's bringing himself back around here, but let's see if Pandarian, the newly reborn Game 5 Pandarian, to try yep. and take out Isam here. And he has all the momentum, and guys, this is Loser's Bracket. Ooh, gonna send them to the right there. And that's one thing, you know, that is really different from Pikachu and Pichu. Pikachu, it depends on which side of the Thunder you are on, but Pichu, it just depends on which way Pichu's facing. How does he make it back? Okay, just does the immediate uh, upbeat just to be able to sweet spot back on, and Isam not gonna be able to find anything yet. And one thing I really want to point out is, like we've said time and time again, Isam is a player that really thrives off of his edge guards. And if right now, I feel like game three and four, Pandarian did such an amazing job recovering ev like the whole entire game. But that forward smash is going to stuff out the withdraw and only 30% here on Isam on that game five. Oh, Pandarian trying to get that grab, but just whips it right there. Caught, caught on the platform, but he's going to make it back down just fine. But of course, the Thunder Jolt, I mean, that... That little projectile is going to cover a lot of space on a small stage like Smashville. You got to be careful about that. The hitbox on up B once again doing Isam so much justice here. Trying to get that forward air, but now he's in a bad position. Almost gets clipped there, but able to make it back on the stage. But once again gets swatted right back out. Pandarian having a lot of trouble to get something started here. Right, makes it back on. Okay, the high vine whip to be able to make it back onto the stage. What's he gonna go for? Not gonna get able to get that tech chase, but of course this follows up the option afterwards. I'm gonna catch you out of shield with this back air. Yeah, and that's one thing that Isam is so great at. His his reactions are so good, so he's just gonna have really great tech chases. But even if he misses them, he knows how to keep the pressure going. Oh, just try to finish it off with the smash attacks. He knows that he's at a high percent and he's feeling himself once more, potentially putting him into a three to one stock scenario right there with that back air. Dang, uh, I don't know what happened to Isam in that uh from the last game to this game but wow what kind of crazy confidence do you need to have this kind of bounce back to lose game three to lose game four essentially get body game four and now he's coming back potentially making a three stock but no pandarian with the down air with the dunk and now we got Isam to two stocks all the directional air dodge makes it back out second time too but Isam still keeping up that pressure Ooh, almost catches that falling up air but it gets the down throw and up air not two up airs though almost catches the vine whip as well Facing himself around. He just throws out those Thunder Tolts. He's just tacking on that very little damage every single time. But Pandarian trying to get something with that fair into the up B. Not going to get it a second time either from that forward air. Ooh, catches the back air. Trying to get these Vine Whips, but Esam is so aware of that option. He has not been getting hit by them. Yeah, all oh, trying to mix it up. Go in with the up air. Not quite going to work. And no tech chase either from Pandarian. Yeah, very, very close. Um, shot to grab the opposite direction there, and now Isam has him off stage. Is he going to commit? No. Wait, he has the T-Jolts. Can he make it back? Yes, he does. Okay. Puts him off stage, though. Uses that up throw. Maybe try to find a mix-up. Not quite going to find anything, though. Yeah, and I don't think Isam's going to fall for that back air again. Uh, he's definitely looking like he knows the range of it, and he's just being very, very careful not to get back air from Charizard. All right, switches back to the Squirtle. Try to find something on the switch. Oh! And you saw the red ring right there. Yeah. Too much knockback. I don't even know if you were holding down was going to be able to do anything because he was so close to the stage. That's going to be an untackable. And Esam looks at the camera. Yeah, and Top I mean, 